viciously inculcated into everybody else's thing and everybody else's culture, and people don't know who's who and what's what and can't see who's who and what's what. But let's go with uh, Cortez when he came over here south of the border, and they went down there and found all those melanin-rich people who had run from Africa to America to get away from probably the invaders that were taking over, running out of Rome and running out of whatever place they came running from. And I brought out way back in the day how Rome was basically an inbred, incested out tribe of people that took over everywhere else and everybody else. And they started out messing with other people that were pale complexion and then got a hold of them and started telling people, oh, it's a color game. It was never a color game. It's all about the tyrants that now are identified as elites, but they're still tyrants. They're still crazy, and they're still on some control freaks. And again, if you start out as some cast out, you're mad at the whole world. You're mad at your mother, whether she's an African mother or a European mother. You're mad at mothers in general, which is the whole anti-matriarchy, anti-maternal, anti-woman movement. So I'm saying all that to do what I try to do best, to get you guys clear. But these people, you know, they ran over to, um, they ran the, some brothers out of Africa, uh, in the journey, you can probably find out more about that in the journey of the Songhai people or the people of Mali and how a lot of them ran um, here. Because if you understand the, the ancient story of ancient Lemuria, ancient Mu, um, and how at one point in history, and I can't remember where I read all this stuff. I've, I've, I've done a lot of research. But at one point in history, the, the people of Mu, ancient Lemuria, were the mother empire of the world. And they had been doing that for millions of years, billions of years. They got tired eventually of, you know, policing the whole earth. Now, they did not go around the world, you know, uh, blending with everybody, but they went around the world and basically, you know, policed the planet for whatever reason and for, I don't know, for whose return or whatever return. At any rate, at some point, they decided that's enough. Everybody is at a point of evolution where you guys can police your own corner of the world. And everybody was allowed to left to police their own corners of the world. Well, ancient Atlantis, the Atlanteans, who were on a different modality of thinking than the ancient people of Mu and Lemuria, were on the uh, the people of ancient Mu and Lemuria were right use of will people, just like their remnant seed descendants today. Most of the people running around in, in, in the United States that call themselves African America American are the remnant seed of the people of ancient Lemuria or ancient Mu that was the mother empire of the planet. They were right use of will people. Man, you just do your own thing. I'm, I'm not bothering you. Don't bother me. You do you, I'll do me. I'm, you just leave me alone, I'll leave you alone. I'm not going to bother you. I don't care what you do, man. Just don't bring it to me. That has always been our modality. That's still the way most of our people function to this day, except now you've got some of us that are getting the control freak agenda like these other tyrants running around here. Now, at some point, the people of ancient uh, Atlantis which were control freaks by nature. They were on some whole, how in the hell can anybody have right use of will and just do what they want to do and you're not going to bother anybody? That doesn't make any sense. People are too stupid to just do what they want to do. You have to tell them what to do. They must be told what to do. They can't think for themselves. Those are the people trying to rule the planet right now. You do what we say, when we say, go where we go. Where's your papers to travel? And all of a sudden, their control freaks always have been. At any rate, they decided not only did they no longer want to be a daughter empire under the ancient mother empire of Mu, Lemuria, or whatever. They decided that they wanted to be the mother empire of the world and that they were going to destroy ancient Mu, Lemuria, and remove her and uh, all memory of her from the minds of everybody and from the world. And that's one of the things they're trying to do to this day. Now, when they caused the flooding and sinking of ancient Mu, Lemuria, some of the people went and started, they went one way and started what they call the ancient Egyptian empires. Some of the other people went the other way and started what they call the ancient American or mound building empires. Okay, so these people had separated themselves. Now, the people of Egypt knew about the people because they're one with the people, okay? But <clears throat> the people of America basically went on cloak. When they stepped out of the, out of the mode, they went on cloak. Because remember, the people of ancient Atlantis was on some other stuff about them. Now, the people of ancient Atlantis, they blew themselves up with their technology tripping. Now, they were also the first ones to start that whole genetic modification. 
part horse, part man, part fish, part woman, part whatever. They had these part animal, part people running around over there. They're the ones that started that mess. When they sunk, when they blew themselves up, they got on boats of the survivors and scattered off to the four winds, and a lot of those things that they had, ma that they had manufactured also scattered. And they went off around the world with that control freak mentality. So now we're dealing with what we're dealing with now. So if you comprehend that Cortez's people came to south of the border, what they call the Mexico area of Mexico now, um, and I think they were following the people that had ran from so-called ancient Egypt over to be, I guess, amongst their brethren or whatever. Then you had that other faction that I was talking about that came over here with that uh, 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 sacrificial stuff. But you had these people that ran over here, and then you had these people that ran over here after them. When they started killing off and or enslaving the people that were south of the border, a lot of the people that they found ran off into the woods and places where the Europeans didn't know to go and didn't know how to go or where to go and couldn't find their way there because they needed melanin-rich guys to take them. And then you had those that were sold off into slavery. And then you had some that went from south of the border back over to what the area of Egypt is now, and that's where they built that newer, sleek pyramid over there. You know, they started with the rougher concept. It was, you know, dirt mounds and then the step pyramids and then the sleek ones were the, the last and the best because, you know, they had perfected the stuff by then. That's why they found so much ancient Egyptian-type stuff in ancient, I mean, not ancient, in uh, Arizona's uh, 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 Grand Canyon, which the Smithsonian Institute is throwing away and dumping a lot of that stuff into the oceans and things like that as they find it, trying to bury the truth about who everybody is and who's doing what to whom. Because the melanin rich people have moved, never bothered anybody then, ain't bothering nobody now. We, we, like I said before, we drive one another crazy, but oh well. Now, after they did that, uh, now, and keep in mind, when Cortez and them showed up, the brothers they found down there, uh, uh, brother, uh, what's his brother's name, uh, uh, Montezuma, uh, brother Montezuma and them, they greeted them like melanin rich people greet everybody you know, in friendship and in generosity, gave them a bunch of gifts of gold, no problem. It was no problem. It's like, oh, you guys have more of this gold. Now, keep in mind, these are boys that came over here, and they're crazy boys at that. And they honor these other boys that are in the boys, because one of the definitions of boy means knave. A boy is a bad word. It's a knave. K like Kansas, N like never, A, V like Victor, E, knave. A knave is a dishonest person and a rogue and a damn thug. So these were boys. They were young boys, and they were boys by definition. They came over here uh, as friends or behaving as if they were friends, and the next thing that people knew, you know, King Montezuma was being carted off damn near gunpoint and uh, murdered and the whole nine, and everybody was being enslaved and running for their lives and hiding for their lives. After that took place, a bunch of European people, possibly Neanderthal, were uh, uh, transported as a colony, because that's one of the definitions of colony, to move or transport a people from one place and plop them down to inhabit another place. So they brought in a bunch of people from Spain to repopulate Mexiland or Mexico, and these people south of the border, a lot of whom call themselves Mexicans, are basically Spanish from Spain. That's why they are. That's why they say, "Are you Mexican, Hispanic, or non-Hispanic?" Or meaning, "Are you of Spain? Or are you not of Spain?" That's why they're identified as so-called white because their asses are so-called white. Now you have those that are part melanin rich because they, um, the males, um, 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 met or hybridized or crossbred with the sisters that were found there. So some of these people that are identified today as Mexicans, if they go far enough up their ancestry, they will find their nigger for lack of better words. Some of them won't, which means you're just the Spanish conquistadors and the children of the Spanish conquistadors or those that were transplanted south of the border to be considered Mexico. Now, those people swear them down. When they got there, they started calling themselves by the name of the people that had been killed off and run off. This is what they do everywhere they go. So if you understand the culture while people are saying, oh, you, my people are always trying to steal somebody else's culture. Hold up, homie. You guys are stealing other people's nationality and culture. 
You come along, you steal people's land, then you start killing off the adults, then you start raping the women and children and stealing the children, eating the people, selling them into slavery, whatever the case may be. You wind up with their resources, their land. You steal their name and call yourselves by the name of the people you found. You steal their identity and their culture, and then you become them and say that they're from somewhere else and that they're not indigenous or aboriginal or autochthonous to here. Well, indigenous don't mean what people think, so you're right. We're not indigenous. So, no, these people that call themselves Native American Indians, they can have that. I've said it before. You can be Native American Indian, but you ain't a talk to this Aboriginal American. And I don't know how many of you heard Alabama, Alabama Senator Scott Beeson, B like boy, E-A-S like Sam, O-N, Beeson. He went in wearing a wire down in the area that I was going to move to, an area called Green County, Alabama. I wanted to get some land down there so I could start trying to activate the American empire so people can get some goddamn peace of mind and some sanity and be left alone the way America is always supposed to have been, a leave, a leave me alone kind of place. However, Alabama's senator, he's Republican. He does not want a bunch of casinos in Alabama. Scott Beeson, for the federal government, for the FBI and the feds, he wore a wire. He went in, you know, tape with wire and recording conversations of people um, that were other Republican people and people that owned uh, casinos. Now, in Greene County, Alabama, you got to know about Greene County, Alabama, the major uh, 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 city of which is called Utah, but it's spelled E-U-T-A-W, but it's pronounced Utah, just like Utah and uh, wherever the Mormons are. So at any rate, down in this area, the general population there is melanin rich, or what they currently call African American. They've always been there. That's the one county that's still the, the I think that's one of the most so-called black counties in the whole United States. Um, the judges have always, damn near always been melanin rich. Uh, the county clerks, melanin rich. The sheriffs, melanin rich. Damn near all the people, melanin rich. That's one place that was still left standing that the Europeans never got on, because remember, this whole thing that they call the Louisiana Purchase, also known as the Neutral Strip, also known as the Neutral Zone, also known as the Neutral Territory, that encompasses multiple states and makes up uh, many leagues of land, was supposed, and it, it bisects the United States right down the middle. It was an area that was set aside for just the niggas of America that they found here. The Europeans were not supposed to be there. And the word pilgrim means foreigner. Why well, everybody's talking about illegal immigrants. Shit, where is their, when they jumped off the Mayflower, where was their green card? But again, melanin rich people didn't care. We're all some more, plenty of room, plenty of food, plenty of everything to go around. And nature is still that way. There's still more than enough of everything to go around, but it's hard to have enough of everything when you have control freaks that are hoarders that think that they have the right to dictate to the world because that's that Atlantean mentality. That's why they always talk about ancient Atlantis, and you almost never hear anybody speaking of ancient Mu or ancient Lemuria. However, where are you going to find the mirrors? The mirrors, that's where you're going to find that whole concept, which is not quite the same as Moors, but I just let everybody say what they want to say because I don't have time to argue all day. At any rate, um, Alabama Senator Beeson was talking to some Republican other European males, and one of the things that was said was they were talking about these uh, 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 casinos that they want to set up, and it was like, well, you know, they're just a bunch of niggas. Give them some food and some bingo and, and, and put them on some buses paid for by HUD, and you can get them to the polls to vote for this agenda. That's all you got to do with them is just, you know, feed them and bless them. They'll vote. And uh, some, now they're saying that, 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 that Scott said that, you know, the niggas were illiterate and this and that. It really wasn't him that said it. He didn't say that. Somebody else basically said that niggas are illiterate and this and that, whatever the case may be. What he did say is one of the individuals, and I got his name somewhere around here. I can't think of it off the top of my head. One of the Republican senators said, well, them are, those are y'all's Indians. And Scott said, they're, they're Aborigines, but they're not Indians. And he got grilled by the federal court for an extensive period of time for saying that the niggas were aborigines. Then you got pink people who say, oh, that must have been a derailed train of thought. That must have been a slip of the tongue. That's one hell of a slip of the tongue. 
That's a serious thought gone way awry. The reason he said that, and he said, I don't know why I said